This video is for anybody who's got the DJI Goggles 2 and wants to get even better range and penetration out of them. And I say even better range and penetration because they've got freaking great range and penetration considering the antennas they've got on them. But what if we could put even better antennas on them? And what if we didn't have to buy all new antennas just for this crazy connector that the DJI Goggles 2 have? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Hey there folks, Joshua from the future here. I have two things I gotta tell you before we get into this video. The first one is that I am using the Goggles 2 in this video. They have removable antennas. Uh, my understanding is the DJI Goggles Integra do not have removable antennas, so what I'm about to show you simply won't work, and that may be a reason to prefer the Goggles 2 if you think what I'm gonna show you in this video makes a big difference. The other thing you need to know relates to plugging and unplugging the adapter that I'm gonna show you. And if you don't know this thing, it could completely ruin your goggles. I'll tell you more about that a little later in the video. The DJI Goggles 2 have shockingly good range and penetration when used with the stock antennas. But FPV pilots always wanna get a little more performance out of their systems. And one of the things that we're used to doing is putting high gain antennas on our FPV goggles. And when I first saw the DJI Goggles 2, I thought that these antennas were not removable and we were just out of luck. It turns out that's not true. If you just grab this antenna, and pull up, it reveals another connector inside there, which means that aftermarket antennas are an option. But the connector that's in there is not an SMA or RPSMA connector that we are used to. It is an MCX connector. And there are almost no antennas on the market made for this MCX connector. In fact, TrueRC makes the only aftermarket antenna for these goggles that I'm aware of. But the product that we're looking at today solves that problem. This is the Lumineer Universal Antenna Adapter for the DJI Goggles 2. And all this is, is an MCX to SMA or RPSMA adapter. All you do is insert this plastic piece into the goggle, which is used to stabilize the adapter, make sure it doesn't just break off the connector, and then plug the connector in where the old antenna used to be. It takes just a little bit of force to get it to plug all the way in, but once it's in there, it's good and secure, and you're ready to go. And what this means is that you can use the aftermarket antennas that you already own, maybe for your DJI V2 goggles, for example, with the Goggles 2. You don't need to spend 50, 70, 80, or $100 on a new set of aftermarket antennas just for these goggles with their weirdo MCX connector. So what I wanna do in this video today is just get a sense of how much better the performance could be with a set of aftermarket antennas compared to the stock ones. We're gonna take the stock antennas, we're gonna fly them out to the ridge there, and then we're gonna do the same thing with some Omni antennas and some directional patch antennas. Just have a good time. Let's do it. Now I need to give you guys a disclaimer that this is not a proper long range test. It's basically impossible to fly long range legally in the United States and I would never do something so blatantly illegal as to put myself on YouTube breaking the rules. And for anybody who's scoffing and laughing about that and saying, what are you talking about, Bardwell? You're flying BVLOS right now. That's not true. This entire ridge is within the line of sight of my spotter who prefers to stay off camera, but there's nothing wrong with that. This entire ridge is within line of sight of my house and that's why I fly up here when I want to do any kind of semi longer range testing. Um, I don't fly over the ridge because there's houses over there There's, and I don't think it would be responsible to fly over all those houses and potentially crash on them. But this ridge here is largely unoccupied and if I crash, I'll basically just lose my drone, but that's about it. And what I wanna do is uh, fly back and forth along the ridge I've got my head basically facing towards where the quadcopter is, and I'm gonna see what kind of performance I get in terms of the megabit per second marker in the lower right. And I'm just gonna fly back and forth within the range of what I can see and see how we do. And we're getting about uh, well, 25, 30 megabits per second. Occasionally we're going orange. Interestingly, we go orange when I uh, am more or less directly in front of myself. 
But I'm gonna keep doing this. I don't wanna get too close to this cell tower that's right in front of me, because I do get interference from the cell tower, and that sort of throws me off. Another test that I wanna do is just to turn around to face this way and uh, fly up the road here. I turn around to face this way because the, uh, that puts the antennas sort of facing in the direction that I'm flying. And we're gonna fly up the road here. And uh, you've seen this test before if you've seen me do this kind of thing on my channel. So you will not be surprised to learn that right about here is usually where the struggle starts. Although the O3 air unit is quite good at flying through it. And as we continue to go up here, I'll turn my head slightly in that direction just to try to make things as good as they can be. And we'll see how far down here we get. Usually, usually the uh, video link gives up well before this, but the O3 does a pretty good freaking job of hanging in there. Now it's getting bad. Okay, that's, that's it. We could have pushed it a little more, but I'm not interested in walking to go pick it up. Let's bring it home and let's try some aftermarket antennas. Now we're gonna try it with these funny looking things. These are Lumineer double axis antennas. And they are omnidirectional antenna elements, but there are two of them stacked at an appropriate distance. And the effect is that it increases the gain of the antenna. And remember, when an omnidirectional antenna increases its gain, it still transmits or receives in a 360 degree arc. It's just the, the height of that it volume is a little bit smaller. It's a, it's, a, it's a flatter donut, if you will, instead of a fatter donut. Let's see how my performance is up on this ridge compared to the DJI stock antennas. Well, 22, 23, 20s, feeling about the same. Maybe a little worse, hard to tell. Like I said, this is not a scientific range test because that would require me to fly BVLOS and, and that wouldn't be legal, so. It feels like we're getting, it's a little bit worse. It feels like I'm seeing orange more often and for longer with these antennas than with the stock ones. Maybe the stock ones aren't truly omnidirectional. Yeah, see, we were up at around 50 megabits per second some of the time on the stock antennas, whereas here, there we go, there's a 50 right there. It seems like we're not doing quite as well. We're sort of, certainly wouldn't say we're doing noticeably better. Uh, let's come down here and let's fly back home. Doodly do. I mean, it's really, the O3 is so good compared to every other system I've flown. Oh, here we got a drop down to 40. We'll have to check the tape and see how the stock antennas did. I didn't quite catch that. I think they were higher at this point. Now we come around here, hanging in there pretty good. All right, we got my neighbor there. We'll stay away from him. Got solid orange coming through here. And when do we hit red? Oh, 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 there it goes, there it goes. Oh yeah, oh, I feel like, I'll we'll bring it home. I feel like these antennas are doing just a little bit worse, maybe the same as the DJI stock antennas. I guess we don't technically know the gain of the DJI stock antennas. I mean, maybe it's out there, I don't know it. Maybe that's got similar or even greater gain than these. I wonder if we could do a test to show the difference it makes when you've got these stalks up above your head versus when they're down behind your face. Let's do this. Let me face away from the ridge and we shouldn't really see much difference at all whether I am facing away or facing towards. Uh, okay, we'll just do a little circle here right at the end of the road. We're just at the top of the ridge right off the end of the road. We'll do a little circle and we will then we'll turn around to face the ridge and we'll see what it does. Not, not much difference. Now we'll bring it home. So now we're back on the stock antennas and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Uh, I'm gonna start out facing toward the quadcopter and everything should be fine. We'll do a little loopy loop here. All right. And then I'm gonna turn to face away 
and maybe I'll tilt my head down just a little bit too. And you can see now it's just a little bit worse. And if I turn back, it should get, it gets a little bit better. Well, now we're gonna try something truly different. We're gonna put some higher gain patch antennas on here. And this is gonna give us a lot stronger coverage in front, but weaker coverage in back. Let's see how they compare to the stock antennas. And the first thing I wanna do is just repeat that test that I did previously where I was facing the quad and then I turned around. And we should see even more dramatic a result because now not only will my head be in the way, but the antenna's coverage pattern is gonna be working against us. We are holding at about 25, 30 megabits per second. It seems like we're doing a little better here than we were on the Omni antenna. So a little better, but if I turn around this way, it's way worse. Oh my God, it's so much worse. So uh, this type of setup is not ideal for every situation. You gotta know that you're gonna be flying in front of yourself more than you are behind yourself. Let's see how we do. Let's see if we do better than with the stock antennas or the Omni antennas. Yeah, oh yeah, oh we are, oh, oh yeah. Uh-huh, we're doing significantly better. We're doing significantly better. We're hardly seeing any orange at all now. Yep, that's what I would hope to see. Uh, obviously, yeah. Oh yeah, let's do this other test. 3.65, I'm gonna go get another battery so I don't kill a battery trying to do this other test. Now I'm gonna turn to face this way and I'm gonna make sure to align my head in the optimal direction so my antennas are pointing right at the toughest part of the test and let us see how we do. I hope we do better. Uh, oh, well. Oh, interesting. It, it dropped down and then it came back up. I wonder if we were slightly off the beam. I don't know. Oh, oh no. I don't know what's going on here. Am I facing the wrong way? Hang on, I jumped. I bumped up in altitude by accident. That's not fair. We gotta do this right. Let's be fair. Well, well, well. The final test. How far can we get before it goes red? It's, it's got to be better. Eight, seven, four. Oh, oh, there's red, but it's not as bad. I mean, it's red, but it's not crazy stuttery and did a little better. Not as much better as I might have would have hoped. Earlier in this video, I told you that there was something you needed to know about this type of adapter that would ruin your goggles if you didn't pay attention to it. And I'm gonna tell you what that is just as soon as I tell you about my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount you subscribe at is completely up to you. Just ask yourself how much value do you feel like you get out of my content, and then head over to Patreon and sign up at that level. You can change the amount or cancel whenever you want, but I hope you keep feeling like you get a lot of value out of my content and you stay as a subscriber. Patreon is one of the most important ways uh, to support creators like me because it is a stable income that you can usually count on. Ad revenue from YouTube may come and go, but Patreon is always there to make sure that I can pay the bills and keep making this content. If today is the day that you go, damn it, he's right, I need to sign up. There's a link down in the video description to patreon.com. And if today's not the day, that's fine, that's fine. Sometimes it takes a while before you go, this creator has earned my support and I'm gonna keep making this content. I hope you keep watching it and maybe that day will come. The thing that will ruin your goggles if you don't know it is that all RF connectors, SMA, RPSMA, UFL, MMCX, and yes, MCX, have a certain number of rated connect and disconnect cycles. They're not, they wear out. 
RF connectors are incredibly finicky. They're not just like, ah, I plugged a cable into the wall to get electricity at 60 hertz. No, they operate at megahertz and gigahertz, and those signals are very, very temperamental. So if you are constantly plugging and unplugging these, eventually the MCX connector in the goggle will wear out. Uh, and that's a big deal, especially if you go with, oh, there's another connect and disconnect cycle, uh-oh. Especially if you go with a big patch antenna like this, you may even feel like you need to take it off before you put these goggles away inside your, your, your case or inside your backpack because you don't want to take a chance on it getting broken off. And if you're doing that every day, every time you fly, plug and unplug, plug and unplug, plug and unplug, it'll wear out and then your goggles will just be ruined because that's not a replaceable part. So if you buy these, what I suggest you do is you unscrew the antenna off of this thing. Now, this connector will wear out, but then when it wears out, you just spend another 15, 20 bucks, whatever, to buy a new set of adapters and the MCX connector in your goggle stays healthy. I said at the beginning of this video that this wasn't gonna be a true range test. We are not doing the kind of controlled, repeatable flights that a true range test, like those that Wesley Vardy used to do before he got in trouble with his government regulation. Fingers crossed, I don't get in any trouble because I'm not breaking any rules. This is not that kind of test. The point of this is just to show that if you have the goggles too and you have a set of aftermarket antennas that you wanna use with the use of these Luminaire adapters, you can go ahead and use them. The actual performance that you're gonna get will depend on which antenna you get. But we can already see that there is some advantage to a tall stock antenna like this Luminaire double axi compared to the stock antennas, which are down near your face. And there's some advantage with even these Luminaire patch antennas, although I need to point out, patch antennas inherently have a lower efficiency than other types of some other types of antennas. And so if you were to go with an antenna like a True RC X Air, which is a crosshair antenna instead of a patch, it would do even better. And you could go with an even higher higher gain antenna, like to get even more penetration. The point is not the specific performance of these antennas, although now that you know the performance of these antennas, if you wanna pick them up, there's links in the video description below and they are affiliate links. So use those links, I get a little commission, it helps support the channel, it means a lot when you do that. The point is not the performance of these specific antennas, but to say, hey, you can use whatever antenna you want with these goggles too now. You don't have to wait for someone to make a special antenna with an MCX connector on it. If you want some help figuring out what kind of antennas are gonna work best for you, I've got a perfect video for you to watch. I show the difference between omnis and patch antennas and why it's not always better to use patch antennas. I've put a link to that uh, in the video description and a card on screen if you wanna check that out. I'll see you there.